Good afternoon, everyone. It's our pleasure to meet all of you here. Today, our topic is to introduce and elaborate the uh, activities of Super Long Term Support Kernel Work Group in several uh, infrastructure platform projects. I'm AC Lin, work for Moxa, uh, a Taiwanese company. I'm also a Debian developer and contribute in various uh, open source projects. And this is Pavel. Pavel is uh, cooperating with Danks, and he is also a kernel hacker. Several infrastructure, such as radar system, power plant, and railway system. There are some uh, key challenge in this system. That is industrial grade, sustainability, and security. For industrial grade, uh, some requests such as reliability, functional safety, and real-time capability. For sustainability, there are some demands such as product life cycle of decades. This is very important. That means we have to maintain and fix it for a long time. The next is backward compatibility and standards. The next one is security. We have to uh, manage the security and vulnerability. And we have to do some firmware update once the security found it. And next one is we have to minimize the risk of regression. So CIP is the solution. CIP established an open source base layer to try to uh, overcome these challenges by using open source software. So as you can see, this is an uh, open source base layer. We have uh, CIP kernel and CIP core packages. So this is the uh, figure of the scope in CIP. We have uh, super long-term support kernel and real-time kernel. We have uh, testing automation, build uh, environment, long-term support strategy, security. That means IEC 62443 standard. And CIP core package. The last one is safe and secure updates. In this session, we will address a uh, super long-term support kernel work group. This is the first work group in CIP project. And uh, we aim to maintain Linux kernel for 10 plus years. We also maintain the real-time kernel by uh, applying the pre preemptive RT patch. So uh, for the policy and progress, this is the current LTS version. As you can see, there are six versions uh, for stable kernel now. And CIP choose two of them for uh, being CIP kernel. That is 4.4 and 4.19. We aim to uh, maintain and support the uh, CIP kernel for 10 plus years. So how could we do that? This is our kernel development. As I mentioned, we try to, uh, our, our goal is to support the uh, Linux kernel for 10 plus years. So we have the developers and maintainer and mentor. We send the patch to the mainline and uh, review the mainline patch to the LTS kernel, and then we build up our uh, CIP SLTS kernel. For now, we have 4.4196-CIP38 kernel and 4.19.78-CIP12 uh, kernel. Furthermore, we also have the um, CIP kernel CV tracker and fail patch tracker. 
So this is our uh, main team member. I'm the AC Lin chairperson, and this is Pavel, our kernel maintainer. Another uh, kernel maintainer is Iwamazu san, and we also have the mentor, that is Ben. So this is our current uh, SLTS version. We have four versions. The first one is uh, 4.19. The maintainer is Iwamazu san and Pavel. And it's, uh, uh, it's released, the first time released is uh, uh, 2019, January. So the latest release is October, uh, three weeks ago. So the current version is 4.1978-CIP-12. And projected uh, EOL is 2029 plus. That means 10 years plus. For 4.19-RT kernel, uh, the maintainer is Pavel. The first release is also in the 2019, January, and the latest release is in the 2019, October. The version number is 4.1972-CIP-RT3. The projected uh, EOL is 2029+. Plus. And now the version is 4.4 which is the first CIP kernel. It's released at uh, 2017, that's uh, two years ago. And the latest release is 2019, October. Version number is 4.4196-CIP38. The projected EOL time is 2027. The last kernel version is 4.4RT kernel. The maintainer is Pavel, and the first release is in uh, 2017, November. And the latest release is uh, 2019, uh, October. The version number is 4.4190-CIP36-RT25. So our maintainer's policy are uh, right down in the uh, wiki page. So I'll... Um, list some uh, portion of that. The first one is we follow the stable kernel development rule. So every uh, patches should be follow the stable kernel rule. The second is uh, validation will be done by our testing infrastructure and our members. The third is we also accept the feature backported which is not allowed in the stable kernel. But we, also, we only accept the feature backports from CIP members. And the patches should be in the mainline kernel first. That means we have the upstream first policy. The last one is um, we use the Linux Foundation Developer Certificate of Origin, that is DCO. Regarding the out of three uh, drivers, uh, in general, we don't support it. So if um, anyone wants to use the out of three drivers, you can do it by yourself, but we don't support it because we have the upstream first policy. This is our uh, development figure. As you can see, we use the mainline uh, kernel to, uh, we use the stable kernel, which uh, was the mainline kernel. And, okay. Oops. As I mentioned, we accept the virtual backport. So once the patch merge in the mainline, it can be to here, to the backported patches. And it will be uh, merged by uh, maintainers to 4.4 or 4.19 kernel. So we will uh, take over the uh, kernel maintainers after the EOL from the stable kernel. For now, we maintain two kernels, just I mentioned, 4.4 and 4.19. So basically, the uh, CIP patches come from two uh, way. 
the first one is stable patches. Stable kernel uh, rule uh, lists that uh, it only accepts uh, security fix and bug fix. So we um, create another way, it's backported patches. It accepts feature backports. It, uh, it should be sent to CIP-DEV at um, list the CIP project org mailing list. The maintainer will review it and accept it once approved. So that is our uh, development process. So uh, next section is patch review. I will give the floor to the maintainer, Pavel. Thank you. So I will talk about how we review stable patches and patches from CIP members. Uh, everything we do should be public. So we have a repository called LTS commit list. And each time new stable kernel is released, uh, we add the uh, uh, titles of the patches and SAH H hashes and then make notes uh, about the reviews we done. Uh, usually the good thing would be to ex acknowledge the patch, but there are other possibilities, like patch may be under review, which still looking at that. Uh, there can be negative acknowledge. Uh, patch may need uh, additional patches to be backported, and uh, we only review patches that are relevant to our members. So, for example, Ethereum architecture is probably not re uh, review relevant to CIP project, so we will just ignore those patches and merge them without review, as long as they don't touch anything they should not. Uh, we do this, uh, so this is how the uh, review files look like. Um, Nothing much to see there. We do this for each uh, st stable kernel 4.4 and 4.19. Uh, sometimes uh, things don't go quite smoothly. And uh, these days we are trying to help stable kernels a bit too. So we try to do the reviews actually early because if the review is done before the stable kernel is reviewed, uh, is released, uh, community benefits too. So this is one of the results. Uh, there was a patch uh, being proposed, but it needed additional patch to fix it up. So it was not the during review and it was fixed. Or uh, I will talk about that in the next slide. So you may have noticed uh, there are uh, stable kernel rules are described in uh, the kernel documentation. Uh, unfortunately, in practice, we found that there are some differences between what's written in the documentation and what happens in practice. So there's one rule that uh, uh, is enforced, and it's that uh, it or an equivalent fix must already exist in Linux, Linux history. Uh, what the rule doesn't tell you is that very strong preference is given to merging the same, exactly the same patch with exactly the same change log uh, as in the upstream. Uh, other rule says that it must be obviously correct and tested. Uh, what uh, is not obvious from the documentation uh, is that uh, the preference is actually given to the first rule. So if it's discovered that the patch was buggy, uh, we will still, uh, or not we, stable and we inherit it. Stable will still merge the patch that is buggy, but will merge the fix too. Uh, next rule says that it must be a real bug that bothers people. Uh, we don't find this to be enforced in practice. In particular, tiny memory leaks like once per boot uh, that are pretty common are being merged to the stable tree. Uh, we, uh, like, fortunately, these kind of fixes don't usually cause problems, so it's like that. Uh, 
And the next rule makes it clear what kind of errors are acceptable. It must fix a problem that causes a build error, an oops, a hang, data corruption, a real security issue, or some old that's not good issue. In short, something critical. That was a quote from documentation. Uh, but uh, during our review, we found that uh, build time warnings are fair game too, which may or may not be reasonable. Uh, runtime warnings uh, are, fair, are being patched regularly, which is probably reasonable. But uh, we also see uh, stuff like confusing print key messages being fixed or adjustments on the long levels and so on, which may be a little bit out of scope for stable, in my opinion. And there is an next rule which says that it cannot contain any trivial fixes in it, but this one, again, is not enforced because preference is given to merge, merging the exactly the same patch as is. So, uh, this, these are statistics of uh, our team's contribution to upstream. So for kernel, we commented on more than 60 patches. Uh, on 4.4.19, it was 73 patches. And uh, we did 30 backports of patches we uh, thought would be necessary for 4.4 that were applied to 4.4.3. Uh, process for patches from our members is slightly different. So basically, we try to enforce similar rules, but uh, we accept features that would not be acceptable for stable. So if a CIP member has a hardware, uh, he needs support it, uh, we will actually take the patches. Uh, usually, uh, so the, uh, uh, we may take feature, uh, hardware support, which would not be acceptable for stable, but the rest of the rule stays, including that the patch must already be upstream. So there should be no uh, bad effects from divergence between uh, our tree and uh, mainline. So currently we are carrying more than 600 patches in the 443 and more than 400 uh, in the 4.19 uh, tree. The trees are not feature equivalent, so support for some hardware is only being merged to 4.19 because it would be too hard to backport for 4.4 or maybe it's just not that important. And with that, I pass my mic back. Regarding the uh, SLT real-time support, we use the preemptive RT patch, and uh, Pavel is the maintainer of RT kernel in CIP. We will uh, merge it, review it, and validate it. After that, we will release the RT kernel. So for now, uh, CIP has become the gold member of the real-time Linux project and we will work together with real-time um, kernel, uh, real-time Linux project. So you can get more information via the link. So to sum up, this is a kernel release policy in CIP. We will release the 4.19 kernel twice a month and 4.4 once a month. And regarding the uh, real-time kernel, we will release the 4.19 RT twice a month and 4.4 RT once a month, every two months. Besides, uh, we also release on demand. We support this. It depends on the critical bug or security fix. So it is dynamic. This is the statistics of the CIP kernel and real-time kernel release in the past years. In 2017, we released our first CIP kernel. So in that year, we uh, CIP released 15 CIP kernels and three uh, RT kernels. In 2018, we released 14 CIP kernel and 17 RT kernels in 
4.4 version. In 2019, we released nine uh, 4.4 kernel and five RT kernel in uh, 4.4. So in this year, we support 4.19 uh, to be a new CIB kernel. So we released 12 uh, 4.19 CIB kernel and three RT kernel. For now, we release 38 4.4 kernel, 25 uh, 4.4 RT kernel, 12 4.19 kernel, and three CIP 4.19 RT kernel. So um, the estimate in 2019, because there are still two months uh, uh, in the, uh, 2019, so uh, we just estimate that we will have for uh, 42 4.4 kernel, 26 4.4 RT kernel, and 17 4.19 kernel, 5 4.19 RT kernel in the uh, total year. So next, I will introduce the CIP kernel sec. This project checked uh, the status of security issues identified by CVID in mainline stable and other uh, configured branches. We will track the uh, security issues by these by using this repository. So this is a QR code for uh, entering this repository. So uh, as you know, the kernel is very huge, so it, we cannot maintain all of this. So we only maintain uh, the uh, scope with the CIB kernel config. CIB kernel config is uh, come from the uh, CIB members configuration. So the security issue are determined to be fixed based on kernel configuration provided by CIP members. This is an example. As you can see, we use a YAML uh, format to track the uh, CV issue. For uh, this, Example we support it, so we will uh, write down the uh, fixed by information in CIP kernel. And what if the driver or the uh, kernel doesn't support by CIP? We will write down like this. This is an example which will not be uh, supported by CIP. We just write down ignore and no member enable this driver. That's it. So uh, this is the classify fail patches. We usually see the fail patches uh, email in the stable kernel mailing list. So we create uh, this project to track the status of fail patches and classify the patches into Apply or to apply. These are the example for uh, the results. As you can see, we can uh, track the applied patches and to be applied patches. And we will work on the uh, to be applied patches to uh, solve the conflict issues and then we will send back to the stable kernel. After that, we will have the testing. Every CIP kernel will uh, have a test, and then we will release. For the uh, testing infrastructure, this is uh, uh, our architecture of the testing infrastructure. As you can see, we use the GitLab CI CD to trigger Lava Master. The Lava Master will send the uh, task to the Lava worker. And Lava Worker will start the testing job in the reference platform. Uh, if you want to get more detail, you can attend tomorrow. That is CIP Mini Summit. We will describe the detailed testing uh, procedure and architecture. So summary, we have routine tasks and occasional tasks. For routine tasks, uh, we will maintain 4.4 kernel and 4.19 kernel, including the real time. 
we will check down the CVE for security and the uh, failed patches. For occasional tasks, we are going to build up the kernel and RT kernel testing infrastructure, and we will uh, define and update the wiki for the CIB kernel maintenance. In every week, we have a regular online meeting in IRC, and this is a public meeting. In this meeting, we will align our status and uh, try to uh, discuss online and uh, know each other's status. So if you are free, please join it. These are repository from the CIP uh, kernel workgroup. As I mentioned, we have CIP kernel, real-time kernel, CV tracker, and fail patch tracker. To get the latest information, you can subscribe the uh, CIP mailing list. That is CIP-DEV list, uh, CIP-project.org. Other resources, you can visit the Twitter website news wiki. And we have several CIP talks at uh, this event. So in today's 3 p.m. 15, we have an uh, introduction to open source project to live long, a long end process. And tomorrow, we will have a um, CIP mini summit. If you have a ticket, please join it. And in Thursday, uh, automated testing uh, summit. We also have a session there. So, Please feel free to attend this session. The last but not the least, we have the booth at Forum 4 and 5 Sponsor Showcase. So if you all have the free time, please visit us there. And Civil, infras civil Infrastructure, there are eight companies behind this project. So, if you got interest, uh, please join us. Any question? Thank you very much.